Well, Adam, you've had your first look at the course. How did you find it? Did you, was it suit your eye? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, been one of the venues I've been looking forward to coming back to after last year. I really liked what they did here and it was showing signs of being in fantastic shape going forward and it is, it is uh, in the best shape of any golf course I think I've played this year. So it's a real treat to be out here for the next few days. And this course does suit my eye well. It was tough at times last year and mm. any course can get you but we had lovely conditions this morning and uh, it's a real pleasure to play so I'm looking forward to this week very much. Trevor Hurden said that they didn't quite have the greens at the speed that they wanted but it was all being prepared for fast firm greens for the start of the tournament. How did you play today? I played very well today. I'm quite happy they don't have them <laughs> at the speed they wanted <laughs> because I think they're just at a very nice speed to, to test us all this week. Uh, if they firm up a little bit during the week and get a little faster, I think that'll be good for the weekend. But uh, I played well today. I made a bunch of birdies and, uh, you know, got my game to a point where I feel comfortable teeing off tomorrow. So that's important. Great. Can I have questions from the floor, please? Uh, Adam, a little right. birdie, one of your playing partners told me 10 under par or 9 under par. Is that the number you <coughs> shot today? It was something like that, yeah. I stopped counting because I didn't want to feel like I was using them all today. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did play well today. Yeah, I hit a lot of shots close. Rob? Uh, Adam, Jordan came in yesterday, had a lot of interesting things to say, one of which being he thought you were the man to beat this week, partly because you're probably tired of us asking you about having not won since the Crown Plaza last year. Is that the case? And clearly what you've shot this morning says, perhaps you are the man to beat this week. Yeah, look, I'm very uh, fired up to win the Australian Open this week. It's um, got a big feel about it to me. I've I've been building it up in my own mind, uh, just knowing Jordan's coming back to defend the number one golfer in the world. It's important, and it's great that he's here because the whole golfing world will be watching what happens down here this week because he's here, so he's you know, doing a huge favour for Australian golf this week, I think, and uh, absolutely, if you get a chance to play against the best and, and win, that's a big deal and even more special to win your national championship. So for me, this has been uh, a focus of mine for the last couple of months since the US season finished for me and hopefully I'm coming into the right kind of form at the right time. I was three good rounds last week and uh, played poorly in the tough conditions but hopefully uh, made the right adjustments and that's out of the system and I can put four good days together this week to contend and have a chance to win. Jimmy? Adam, uh, you really enjoy the, the trappings of Augusta with the history that's dripping from the place. What was it like up there hitting with the, uh, the roll call of champions from the Australians Open? past and what did that mean to you? To be yeah, involved in? it was a very nice touch to celebrate the 100th playing today, having quite a lot of former champions there and uh, you know, I think nice to just appreciate the great history that this event has and uh, I think for everyone there, we play a lot of golf and it's a long career and to reflect back on the year you won is certainly a nice feeling and I think every one of us might have done that for a few seconds up there today. Does that feel like a long time ago? I mean, you look at uh, the year they called out for Adam Scott, there's uh, been a few years since then. It has. They go <laughs> quick, yeah, <laughs> they do. And, you know, I feel like I, I would love to win this tournament more than once. And, uh, you know, it's six years has gone by and they just slip away. So you really have to make it happen, and I think that's what I need to do this week. That's kind of the attitude. I've got to get out there on the front foot and really make it happen for myself. Uh, the field's too good. Um, there's too much quality in this field to just kind of you know, back, back into a win, I think. You're going to have to earn it this week. May I just ask you what you think the best hole on the course is? Uh, there are a lot, a lot of good holes out here. Um, The, 
the first is a nice hole. I think aesthetically it's a lovely hole. It almost has a slight Augusta look to it with a bit of pine straw up the left side, but it's a very difficult first hole and some people might not like that, but I think it's a very nice golf hole. Adam, Karen? a lot's been made of the so-called new big three in golf, um, jostling for the top ranking and whatnot. You just slip back just outside the top ten, obviously had the lead at the Open this year on this last day. Your sort of so-called your perceived struggles, um, are they sort of a symbol of your transition to fatherhood and you know, transitioning into a, a short putter and do you think that's the window you've often spoke about for winning majors is still open? I think it would be a bit rough to <laughs> blame my daughter for my bad <laughs> golf. <laughs> So I won't go there. Um, look, there was some, uh, you know, I made some equipment changes this year with shafts and uh, fiddled around a little bit with my game and that's a bit dangerous and got myself not in the most comfortable spot on the golf course. But sorted that out by the middle of the year. And, uh, but really, look, my putting was poor this year. You can just look at the stats. I was so far down the putting that uh, doesn't matter how good you hit it, you're going to struggle to beat guys like Jason, Jordan and Rory uh, when they're not putting that badly or hitting it that badly. So uh, that's really what it comes down to and uh, that was really frustrating for me. And uh, in the end, I guess, making what is a force change now of the putter was actually good timing and uh, it's a refreshing to have something new to work on when I was getting quite frustrated with the way I was putting and you know when you putt average for a season it definitely has a kind of knock-on effect on the rest of your game it puts a lot of pressure on your long game and your chipping and and all of that started suffering a little bit so you know I'm looking to use the back end of this season as you know turning it around and building something good and the confidence with the putter is high at the moment and that's freeing me up with the rest of my game so I feel like I can go out and contend even when I'm not hitting at the best at the moment. Next. Just on that putter, what have you done you to for the, about that transition to the shorter putter? That you go through a, a fair bit of rhythm, don't you? A fair bit of... A, a rhythm, like you to before you putt, you look at the balance and stuff and it, what have you been working on with your putting? Um... Essentially, the principles of putting with the broomstick I've applied to the short putter and, um, you know, adapted all the things I like uh, that I had going putting with a long putter, I've made relevant to the short putter and, uh, you know, basically mimicking what I did, the rhythm, all those kind of things. Uh, I'm just doing it with the short one and it's working well, you know, the from the design of the putter head that I use to the way I read the green, to the way the rhythm of the stroke is, to how I'm holding the club. It's all based around the, um, I guess, fundamental things that I did with the broomstick that I liked. And uh, when you've got a pretty clear path of what you want to do and you're not searching, it's much easier to do it effectively. And I think that's why I putted well with the long one for a few years and now I think I've got a good chance to putt better than I ever have with anything with a shorter putter. Bruce? Adam, I know it was his intention to be here this week but I haven't actually set eyes on you and he together. Is Steve working for you this week? Steve is, yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. Mm. And how will that, I mean obviously that's going to feel good from your point of view, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we have a good arrangement now where Steve's working for me <laughs> about half the time. It might be a bit less, but about half the time. But uh, certainly he's at that point in his career where that's about how much he wants to work. So he's coming out fresh and ready every time. And, uh, of course, he's welcome to caddy um, all the time, but it's not exactly what he wants to do. Uh, but we've had such a good record and a good team. I think it'll be good balancing it out that he's uh, still out there and having that influence on me. And uh, he's certainly treating this week just like I've spoken of. This is our major this week and uh, we're going to treat it accordingly and we're here on a mission. Right. 
<coughs> sorry, and just to go back to the putter for a moment, Peter Senior told us yesterday he'd sought your advice about going back to the short putter next year. Just a couple of things about that. One, normally the advice goes the other way between younger and more seasoned. And what sort of things did you tell him? And will you become the go-to guy for guys that are switching to the short putter, perhaps, do you think? <laughs> well, maybe, but I'm going to charge a lot. So <laughs> that might not be popular. Um, yeah, it's different. Peter's used the long putter for so long. I've never even seen Peter putt with a short putter, so uh, I don't really know. But he was talking about doing something similar to me, gripping it in a similar kind of fashion. They're all kind of variations of a claw and a saw and a hook and a this mm -hmm. and a that and yeah. I, you know whatever name you come up with. Uh, but something like that. I think my m thing to Peter was I think he'll surprise himself at how easy he finds it if he can replicate some of the rhythm and uh, fundamentals of that long putter in the short one. Um, you know, I think choosing the right designed head is key in that when you're switching back and uh, I think he might surprise himself how well he putts. Adam, the dream scenario for probably us and the spectators for you and Jordan to be going at it on Sunday head to head. Is that the dream for you as well? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love nothing more than that. And, uh, you know, I feel like I really only had a, had a couple, couple weeks this year where I was playing that top level golf. I was right there at the US Open shooting 64 on Sunday and then leading the Open with five to go. And there was only... I was there, a and I'm a bit starved of it. To, you know, I miss it, and uh, there'd be, I'd love to, be right there with Jordan, Sunday, and going head to head and seeing what I can do and getting back in that kind of mindset. And uh, you know, the Presidents Cup, I'm, I must say, was a bit like that. When you go and play singles at the Presidents Cup, you're kind of thrown right in the barrel. There's no hiding there. You've you've got to play good for that 18 holes, but. You know, to get in the mix uh, here this week with Jordan would be a lot of fun because he's really up, he's the benchmark of golf at the moment.